Erin Frankel, who you talked about, Alexis. She'll be in net for Boston. A great star at Northeastern. And she'll be matching wits with Hensley today. Yeah, these two goaltenders, I'm excited to see how they fare against each other in this game. Two great goaltenders in between the pipes. And Hensley, of course, third in the league with her almost 94% save percentage. So should be a good show this afternoon in downtown St. Paul. And we're underway from the X as the opening draw is controlled by Boston. They'll drive it into the Minnesota end. Minnesota in their home purple. And road white sweaters for Boston. Here comes Minnesota on the attack. That top line going to work right away. Grizova will cycle it into the corner. And it's clogged up there in the corner. Pushed along the wall. Grizova trying to move it along. Centered out in front for Zumwinkle. The knocked off her stick, and Boston's able to clear it back out in front of the benches. As Alexis talked about, the teams split the season series so far, a game apiece. Both of those games were in New England. Point Schofield trying to play it out of the zone on a backhand held in by Boston. Carried in behind the net of Hensley. Here's Channel now, Melissa Channel for Minnesota. We'll get up some speed, bang it off the near wall, and it's going to slide all the way back down. And it's going to be an icing call against Minnesota. Both these teams undefeated in, uh, in regulation when they score the first goal of the game. So that's going to be huge. Boston getting that win finally. Minnesota looking to add some more points, tied for first in the league with Montreal. So I think this first goal of the game, always important, but especially yeah. important here today. And Minnesota beat Ottawa and lost to Montreal in that two-game Canadian road trip. That loss to Montreal really hurt because it came in regulation. And that's the difference right now between the two teams, those three points. Minnesota can get them back here today and get back into a tie for first. Here's Greco from her own blue line. She'll slide it up along the near wall. Buderak tried to advance it for Minnesota. Picked off by Boston. Knocked off the puck at center ice. That was Taylor Girard, who's tied for the team lead with goals for Boston. Back Megan Keller from Farmington, Michigan, one of the three foundational signees. Well, it feels like all these players with their new teams have fit in very nicely with what the coaches are expecting of them, what their team is expecting of them. Cool to see uh, Minnesota, who we get to cover here on home ice, be a part of that first trade in PWHL yeah. history. And exciting to see how these players have started to fit in with their new teams with still so much time to grow before the end of the season hits. The Pani and Cook have really injected new life, yes. it feels like, for Boston. So they got a what they think was a good end to that trade, too. Both teams very happy with the way that historic deal worked out. And especially for Boston, they were looking for life. They were looking for something new, and they got it. Here's a pass down low. Pelkey got it down. Shopsall tried to move it to the middle. And it comes back out to center ice, and Boston has to regroup. Played in on a backhand by Ratchray, Jamie Lee Ratchray, the Canadian Olympian, won gold in Beijing. She's got it. She'll feed the middle. This is Emily Brown from Blaine, Minnesota, former Bengal and Gopher captain. Steckline comes back. One of the top defenders in this league plays it deep. And now Boston will bring it back the other way with Ratchray again. Trying to work around the defender, pulled down, play continues, no whistle. And now Zumwinkle with some room to operate. A good back check there by Boston as they're able to frustrate that play enough. Good job by Zumwinkle on the puck protect protection to get that play far along as she did. Not able to finish it as Boston shut it down defensively. Zumwinkle, good pass out in front, and then Krizova sent it wide of the right post. Little tic-tac-toe there, Zumwinkle, Coin Schofield, and then Grizova couldn't bury him. Well, they're getting some chances here early. And I like how they set that up there. The play from low to high, moving the puck into the slot for that quick shot. Not able to capitalize on it, but a good look for Minnesota. Picked up here at center by Alina Mueller. Their first round pick. Put it on, kicked out of there by Hensley. Mueller very quick. She was a Swiss Olympian at the age of 15, has been a star in international hockey and now professional hockey in her first year. There's a drive, kick saved by Frankel, comes to the near wing. Kept in deep by Minnesota. Loose puck scooped up by Boston. They'll play it to the near wall. This is Hillary Knight now, the captain. Lofted it ahead at center for Gerard, rolls off her stick. And Minnesota drives it back into the Boston end. Now this is going to come back in. 
Brandt got to it. Former Gopher plays it off for Kaylee Fratkin. Slips back out of the zone. Here at center, Abby Cook scored a goal in her second game after the trade with Boston. She's got to be uh, feeling a little weird in this uniform being in this building. Battle for it at the blue line. Now here comes Claire to George. Stood up at the line nicely by Fratkin. And this is going to bounce in on Frankel. She'll leave it for Cook. Minnesota's had some looks early in this one, but Boston equally has done a great job standing up Minnesota on some of these offensive zone entries, not allowing them to move the puck further along the ice than they'd like to. They've been aggressive early. I've liked it. Five and a half minutes gone by, opening period. Boston and Minnesota. Sydney Morin, Minnetonka, Minnesota native now. Flips it out. Looking for G.G. Marvin, the War Road native. That just failed to collect. Minnesota doing a good job to get in the passing lane. And they get it back to the red line. As we're coming up on the six-minute mark of the first period. Here's Amanda Pelkey being chased down by Steckline. Steckline with that long reach. She is so hard to get around. Broken stick, so Minnesota one player short for just a moment. Now they get another one out there. Here comes Steckline again. She'll feed the right wing. Some speed to the middle. Now a long drive channel. That hit some traffic out in front. Skitters off to the far wing corner. Kept alive here by Schaffsall for Boston. And now she'll funnel it over to Jessica DiGirolamo. Who just turned 25 years old. Outlet broken up by Minnesota. Kept in the zone by Kava. Out in front, another nice save by Frankel. We said scoreless, but Minnesota off the turnover with a good look for that first goal of the game. The pass from the corner, Zumwinkel down low, banging that one into Frankel's pads, and she makes the save, keeps it scoreless. Minnesota, Clay, has been moving the puck well early in this first period. They've had a couple decent looks, four shots to show for it, but scoreless still between these two teams. And that's with two premier forwards now, Taylor Heisey and Liz Sheppers, both on the shelf. Remember, Zemwinkle got the first goal of her pro career against Boston in the season opener. Nearly got the first one here today. Boston's going to skate in offside with 12.56 to go in the opening period. Top line back out there. Panic, Boreen, and Coin Schofield out in front. Player goes down. Again, no whistle. And Minnesota fans again maybe looking for a penalty. Not getting it. Now Boston on the attack slides through to the near wing side. Hillary Knight jamming for it. Austin can't keep it in the zone, and now we're going to get a whistle. When you've been generating the chances you have, like Minnesota has early, this is the moment in the game where you got to find a way to capitalize on one, and we'll see if they can do it here. Susanna Tapani and Abby Boreen have the two power play goals this year. Of course, Tapani now playing for the other side. So Minnesota on the power play. The first penalty of the game goes against Boston's Moran. Here's Kava. She'll feed the point. Here's a one-timer deflected in front. Aaron Frankel got a piece of it, kicks it away. Kava chases after it. Krizova kicks it back in deep. Now cleared to George. She'll cycle it back off the end boards to the near wing side. Kava back to the blue line. Long drive. And that one was off of Melissa Channel's stick, deflected. Kept alive by Minnesota. Tap pass. And sticked right on by Kava, but Frankel sees it the whole way. Minnesota has just been cycling the puck so well here tonight, and now with an extra skater out on the ice, a lot more room to work with. Here's a look at one of those earlier chances. The shot by Krasova went off a stick on the way in, and Kendall Coyne Schofield trying to bang it home on the side of the net, and then this chance just moments ago, short side, Frankel closes it up and keeps it out of the net. Zumwinkle, a big blast that Skitters over the top of the net and off the plexiglass all the way back out to center. Sophie Jakes will hand it off for Lee Steckline. Jakes and Steckline still getting comfortable together on that top defensive pair. They're on this power play. 50 seconds remaining on this Minnesota advantage. Cross checking at 7.31. This Power play brought to you by Royale Tiger Towel. Power through tough messes. 
Another drive. Blocker saved by Frankel. Well, she's being tested early. So far equal to the task. Here's Panic. Back to the point again. Another one-timer. Another blocker saved by Frankel. Big rebound left out there. Steckline settles it down. Plays it across. Panic. Steckline. One-timer. Sophie Jakes with a big bomb. Kicked out by Frankel. Eight seconds to go in the advantage. Panic. Down to the end line. Jakes again, Rister broken up as Pelkey gave up her body and it skips out of the zone. Well, I like a lot of what Minnesota did there, but a few times they were trying to force that shot through from high, whereas they should have tried to work it down low. Boston did a great job of getting in the way of some of those shots and not allowing them to do what they wanted to do. They need to try to work it down low a little bit more to create some more chances. Amanda Pelkey played with the Boston Pride, was on their 2018 U.S. Olympic team. Excellent forward, but Used her body for defense on that penalty kill for Boston. Under 10 minutes to go, opening period, still no score. There's another drive. Trying to glove it was Frankel, but another rebound. And one thing for sure is she's giving up some rebounds here. Minnesota just unable to capitalize so far, Alexis. Absolutely. She's seen the puck well. She just hasn't been able to get a lot of whistles, and Minnesota has thrown a lot at her so far. Nine, now 10 have made their way on net, but frankel has been strong. She gets some pats on the back there from her teammates. Coach, your team has been bottled up in your own end for a little bit here. How do you turn this into a positive and find a way to turn this into some offensive opportunities from the defensive side? Yeah, I think we just got to settle down a little bit. I think pucks are bouncing off our sticks right now. So we got to settle the puck and then think about what our next play is. Uh, but we're just a little slow thinking right now. Great. Thanks so much, Coach. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Well, if shots determined the outcome of the game, Minnesota would be <laughs> blowing out Boston right now. It's 11 to 1 in shots. But that was a really good penalty kill for Boston. It was. Uh, it's the second best penalty kill in the league. Yeah, they got in the way of a lot of shots, which is what I mentioned earlier. Minnesota was trying to work it from up high in the zone, and Boston was not allowing them to do that. They got sticks in the lane, they got bodies in the lane, and Minnesota got a lot of shots in on that, but would have gotten a lot more if not for the strong penalty killing by Boston before this first period expires. The panic line out there again for Minnesota. Playing their first home game in 11 days. Minnesota 3 and 2 here at the X this year. They're actually going to be playing somewhat of a road game on Tuesday against Toronto at 3M Arena at Mariucci. As this arena is otherwise occupied. And so that will be a game played across town in Minneapolis. This is going to get through the zone. No icing and up. Complete change here for Boston. We heard from Courtney Kessel. They're getting out skated a little bit. Pucks coming off their sticks, but now they've got some room with Gigi Marvin as she hits the blue line. But again, the puck rolls off her stick as Minnesota has a successful back check. Well, and sometimes when you're on the road, it's just about surviving that first period. And Boston trying to do that here on this trip to the road in Minnesota here where Minnesota has been really strong in front of this great group of fans here on this Sunday afternoon so if you can just survive that first period or that first you know portion of the period sometimes then you start to find your groove a little bit later on the road it could be tough to come out in front of the away fans and put on a good performance yeah, and they do feel like things are starting to come together and with three point it's going to a victor I mean, Boston can make up ground quickly in this league. That's the thing. You can lose ground and make up ground really fast with the way that this system for points works. And we even see how much Minnesota and Montreal has been battling all season long. And it feels like they've just been butting heads and not much movement has been happening because of the way they've been picking up points. Same can go for the bottom of the standings. Save made by Frankel. Didn't see it. It was laying there in the blue paint for a while. Boston's able to clear the zone. Minnesota has to tag up. Again, you know, Frankel makes the initial save, but there are rebounds laying out there. And Minnesota needs to be paying attention to that and realize, okay, we got to get players to the net. Now Cunning kind of dropping it back for DeGeorge. Grant takes it away. Lead pass gets through everybody all the way back in behind Hensley. Nicole Hensley, five wins on the year, including a 33-save beauty at Boston in the season opener. She saw that one as it skips through. Kicked it out, and now Buderak is able to skate it free for Minnesota. That was a tough one. It changed direction at the last minute, and she was able to see it and kick that pad out, but a decent look, one of the better looks for Boston so far in this first period. 
Here's Channel trying to advance it for Minnesota. Two on one. Back the other way. That was a wrister by Gable that nearly got by Hensley. Clanked off her goal stick. I could hear it all the way up here in the press box. She got a piece of it on the way in. Lauren Gable tied for the team lead with four goals. The 2019 Patty Kaz winner from Clarkson. Now here comes Coyne Schofield, the captain for Minnesota. She's neutralized on the near wall. Minnesota trying to hold the zone. Steckline does just that as she'll shovel it in behind the netminder, Frankel. Lauren Gable takes a check. Minnesota picks it off at center ice. Held up at the blue line is Boreen, and now we're going to get a puck that gets up out of play with exactly six minutes to go in the opening period. Let's go back to Nicole Hensley, looking like she's on top of her game again here this afternoon. She hasn't been all that busy in this first period, and this is a tricky save to make. Anytime that puck changes direction late, it can be tough for a goaltender to read. You can watch her tracking it. She stays tight, kicks the pad out, and makes the save. Boston now up to three shots on net, the last two coming recently. Long drive again, a rebound left out of there by Frankel. It, it just popped out of her glove. Jess Healy, who played her college hockey up the road at UMD, plays it across. And now another Minnesotan, Morin, brings it in. Long drive for Morin. Pad saved by Nicole Hensley. Hensley, a three on three All Star, played in the rivalry series. It's really. Had a nice year, five wins on the season. Zumwinkle trying to clear the zone, took a big whack at it, couldn't get it out. Held in, here's Stepani. Delayed call against Minnesota, Frankel to the bench. Might have been on Hensley. Might have been a tripping call on the Minnesota goaltender here. We'll find out. Long drive, Morin on the one-timer. And Hensley with the stop. Tapani keeps it in the zone. She'll walk in, top of the circle. And... Minnesota not able to get control. Mueller will give it back for Tapani. Extra attacker on. Boston has a power play coming up. Minnesota just trying to touch up. Can't do it. One timer. Tapani save Hensley. There finally is the whistle. Not too often you see goaltenders take a penalty. Most penalties protect the goaltender, but this one they're going to get you for every time. Getting the stick out there and getting the trip. She made up for it here with a big save to get the whistle, though, and now Boston will head to the power play, their first of the afternoon. Well, as much as Minnesota's power play has struggled, Boston has struggled almost as much. They are 0 for their last 16 on the power play, 7% on the year. 78.1% penalty kill for Minnesota heading into today's game. Carol Keller will work the point. Trying to tip it past Hensley. It was Hillary Knight out in front of the net. Hillary Knight, overtime game winner against Minnesota in their last meeting. This is Megan Keller. Across Mueller, back for Keller. The one-timer save, Hensley. Rebound to Pani. Tried to hack at it, but Hensley is able to smother the puck and get the whistle. There's not many scarier sights in hockey as a defensive group than your goaltender looking behind them as the shot comes through. And a great blast here from the point. The rebound, talking about rebounds, Hensley gives up a big one there, then recovers, spinning around, gets the glove back there to close up the five hole from the backside. And is able to bring up the whistle. Got some help on the back door there by Channel to poke that puck into her pads to get the whistle. So Minnesota. Keeps it scoreless for now with just over a minute to go on the power play. Heads up play by Melissa Channel, the offensive defender from Winnipeg. Doing a great job on the penalty kill there. Very heads up play. Just over a minute to go in this power play for Boston. Intercepted in the slot and slipped out of the zone. Well done there by Panic. As you look at the power play numbers for Minnesota, just behind Boston, these two teams have really struggled this year with the advantage. Really only two teams in the league putting up good power play numbers, Ottawa and New York. Everybody else has seemed to struggle. A lot of time left in the season to turn that around. But it has definitely been an area where many teams have struggled to find scoring. 30 seconds to go. This first power play for Boston. Good head pass. Long drive. Lauren Gable stoned there by Hensley. 20 seconds to go. Morin flips it down. Gable right on. Rebound 
And Rattray couldn't get it past Hensley. Five seconds to go in this power play, and this is going to be a very effective kill for Minnesota, thanks in large part to the goaltender, Hensley, who committed the penalty. She did, and she made up for it as she made a few saves there on the penalty kill to keep it a 0-0 game, but she was giving up some rebounds as well, Clay. So now we've seen both goaltenders allowing rebounds on both sides of the ice here. We'll see if anything happens because of it, if either team are able to capitalize. Both teams with four shots on goal on their first power play. We're back to five on five. Here's Kava trying to work around the defense of Jessica DiGirolamo. Out in front. And waving at it there with her stick was Frankel. Here's DiGirolamo now from center. Plays it across. Long drive. Kick save. Loose out in front. Hensley. He's kind of scrambling for it. Kept in the zone here by Boston. Flipped out in front. Intercepted. Backhanded out by Minnesota with 1.10 to go in the period. And they wave off icing, so Frankel comes out to play it. And she almost lost her stick there. Last minute of play. Last minute of play here in the first period. Still no score. Boston and Minnesota. Here's Hillary Knight now. Bangs it off the wall. She'll chase. Loose out in front of Hensley. And Minnesota's able to work it back to their own blue line. Steck line. Just over 30 seconds to go. That pass missing to George. It's going to come in. And we're going to have an offside. Or an icing ball, I should say, with 32 seconds to go. As it's been physical here in the first period. It's been a fast period as far as the skating goes. A lot of back and forth, good speed on the ice today. Yeah, a lot of speed, a lot of physicality. I don't know what it is, but I feel like these matinee games, you come in with a little bit more energy. It's the middle of the day, right? And everybody's pumped up, especially, you know, it's a Sunday afternoon. So it seems that way in most instances. And also here this afternoon, it's just been a fast paced and physical game so far through this first period. Buterak put it right on the stick of DeGeorge. Great A scoring chance, but Frankel is able to make the save. Bit of a broken play. She turned it into a really good opportunity here for Minnesota. The play along the wall, stolen away. Minnesota sending it in down low into George with a quick shot there in on Frankel. Great job to outwork the defender. Aaron Frankel has played on four U.S. national team rosters. So she's very familiar with so many of the players on the ice today. On her side, on the opposite side, but that means they're familiar with her as well. So I'm sure Minnesota's maybe thinking there are opportunities to take advantage of some tendencies Absolutely. that they know about. It goes both ways. Here's Steckline, a drive. That wrist shot blocked. That was Hillary Knight, the captain, who got in front of it. Both teams doing a good job clogging up shooting lanes. Welcome back into downtown St. Paul. We are scoreless after one period of play. I'm standing by now with Sophia Cunnan. And Sophia, it was a fast first period for both teams. You guys especially jumped out to a real hot start. How do you find a way to generate that same energy for that second period, but turn it into some scoring? Yeah, I think we did a really good job getting a lot of scoring chances in that first period. I think just keeping up the energy that we have, getting in on the forecheck fast and getting more shots will be, will be key for us coming up. It seemed like Denisa Krasova had a lot of great looks early in this game. What can you say about her and how her line has been working? Yeah, I think their line is a really smart line. They uh, they know how to slow the game down and make really good plays to each other and passes. And I can see them getting one later today, hopefully. Erin Frankel is a tremendous netminder, but it seems in this first period she has given up a lot of rebounds, a lot of second looks. How do you find a way to turn that into some more opportunities for Team Minnesota? Yeah, I think for us we're getting a little bit too tight in on her. Um, for us just getting a little bit more space uh, between the goalie and the pucks that come out will be really key for us. Here's the former Boston player, Jake's getting it ahead for Kava. Kava sent it through the middle out in front of the blue paint. Nobody home for Minnesota. Now back Susanna Tapani. Trying to beat her former team, sets up Rattray beautifully, but Hensley is able to muffle the puck. Rattray throwing her head back, thinking, how did that one not find the back of the net? And that play 
for as scary as that would be for a goaltender to face a play like this, Hensley standing tall, doesn't even look phased. She's there to make the save, covers it up, gets the whistle in Boston. I'd argue that was maybe one of their best looks of the night so far. We need an early one here in the second period, trying to find that first goal of the game. But so far, it's been the tale of the two goaltenders here in this one. Minnesota went with the goaltender in their second round pick with Nicole Hensley, trying to pick up win number six on the year for Minnesota and for her, at least in regulation. It would be six wins for Minnesota if they can get it done here in three periods. Circling, played to the point, bookbinder, hit a crowd in front. And moved out of there by Boston. It's going to slide through the neutral zone. Channel gets back for it. And flip back to the red line. Emily Brown, the former Gopher captain, five years at the U. She's wearing number two in white today. And one of the Minnesota natives on this Boston team. There's a handful of them. There are four today. How about Gigi Marvin back in Minnesota? Her War Road team won the state championship here yesterday. That had to be a real thrill. From what I understand, she caught part of that game yesterday. She's got to be having such a fun year. She got to have Hockey Day in Minnesota in her hometown. She gets to play PWHL hockey in this new and awesome league. She gets to check out War Road in that state championship game. I mean, she's got to be having a good time with this hockey season. Although she hasn't had many not good hockey seasons. <laughs> Every time is a good time for Gigi Marvin, I'm sure. And she doesn't have too many bad days all around. <laughs> Swung back in. Hensley's going to leave it for a defender with 17.45 to go. Second period. Keller pushed it back to the Minnesota blue line. Moved ahead. Mike Greco and dumped in deep. Minnesota will make a line change. Still out shooting Boston 15 to 12. Steck line trying to angle it back in. Now here's Bryant. Brooke Bryant, the former Minnesota State Maverick, couldn't advance it. Taken back here, Isbell on the ice. They haven't called her name much yet in this ball, uh, hockey game. She dumps it in deep. Good back check there by Megan Keller, the alternate captain for Boston. Played through the logo at center. Here's the aforementioned Gigi Marvin. Looking for a return pass. Tried to tip it on, but again, a good back check by Minnesota. Three minutes into the period. Jakes ahead for Dominique Kramer. Kramer centering pass. Brooke Bryant is stopped. Kick saved by Frankel. If she would have gotten to that puck or that puck would have gone to her just a second sooner, I think that would have been in the back of the net. But that gave Frankel just enough time. The puck was just out of her reach where she had to skate to it. And by the time she got there, Frankel found her positioning in Minnesota with another good look. Morin. And that shot deflected wide. Sydney Morin. Drafted by Minnesota, was released in the preseason, picked up by Boston. Trying to get a goal on her former right shoulder. Uh, Moore and played for the Minnesota Whitecaps last year in the PHF, had 17 points over the course of the season. Well, they're centering pass, trying to tip it on. There was Teresa Schopsoll out in front. She was neutralized. Minnesota, a little bottled up. They finally are able to work it out of the zone at the four minute mark of period number two. They get it to the Boston line. Bookbinder pushed it in. Alina Mueller takes over for Boston. Rink wide pass. Trying to move around the defender. Gable taking off her stick by Natalie Bookbinder. Minnesota comes back out of the zone. Here's Panic, and they're going to whistle this one down. That was played with a hand. Let's go back to that last chance for Brooke Bryant, who is still looking for her first professional goal. Well, it almost came right here. Great centering pass, and she just had to reach out to get a piece of it. That gave Frankel just enough time to get over there. If this would have just been a one-timer quick snapshot, I think this would have been harder for Frankel to get in front of that one. But Bryant comes very close to finding that first goal in the PWHL. She's played 10 games this season and had a good look there. Both goaltenders have been tested pretty well so far. I mean, we talked about it in the open, how both games between these two teams so far were one goal, tight matchups, and today is proving to be another example in that pattern. Yeah, and that last one went to overtime. Brooke Bryant set it before, played at Mankato. 23-year-old free agent signee out of Linden, California. Hillary Knight back for Boston, plays it over. Boston gets it ahead for Keller. Keller got it out of the zone. Intercepted there by Maggie Flaherty. 
And the game-winning goal to beat Ottawa on Valentine's Day here for Minnesota in their last home game. Five minutes into period number two. Still scoreless here between Boston and Minnesota. Healy had her pocket picked. So now Lauren Gable comes back. They're going to dump it in. Line change for Boston. Sophie Jakes has it between her skates. Gets it across for Steckline. Steckline is able to get enough speed on it to get it out of the zone. Boston pumps it back in with 14 and a half to go here in the period. Battle along the wall. Keller had it intercepted by Cohen Schofield. She's so quick. Got her stick on it. She's got four goals on the year. Points in five of the last six games. The captain has really come on for Minnesota. Minnesota's done a good job of forcing some turnovers on the forecheck. Boston equally has done a good job of recovering a lot of those turnovers, but Minnesota's been really aggressive yeah. in the offensive zone, trying to steal some pucks, catch Boston in some tough positions. And they've done that quite a few times tonight so far. Stick line will take it herself. Comes wide, trying to cut the corner. Goes to the front, backhand hit the side of the cage. Lee Steckline, among the league leaders in ice time for defenders, playing offensively there, and the 30-year-old almost got Minnesota on the board. Leads Minnesota defenders in points with six on the season, was looking for point number seven there on the backhand. Tapani comes back in. She'll be ridden off the puck with 13.30 to go in the period. Loose in the circle, picked up. Natalie Bookbinder will start it ahead with some speed. Up for Buderak. She'll feed Cunnett. Back for Buderak. Little shot got on. Stick save there by Frankel. Oh, rebound came out. And another kick save by Aaron Frankel. Tough shot. She was in so tight she didn't have much room to work with. And Frankel had that short side post tied up really well. Kept it out of the back of the net once again. Race for the puck. Bryant, who's having a really good period, got to it for Minnesota. Tried to turn the play to the middle. Taken back by Boston. Shopsall was stood up as she tried to advance it. And it's going to be driven all the way back down in an icing call. Go. Let's go back to that, that last save by Erin Frankel. And she's had some beauties today. She really has. And she's got her eye on the puck here. You see the pass comes from low to high there from behind the net. And take a look at it here from this above angle. Watch this kick save come through. She's been great so far tonight in this one. Minnesota's peppered her with some tricky shots. And she's kept everything out of the back of the net. Two goals and assist on the year for the former golfer, 23-year-old free agent. He's going to pharmacy school at the university. Knocked down at the line by Jakes. Minnesota trying to hold the zone, can't do it. Jakes will climb back into the play and push it into the far corner. Battling there with Kaylee Fratkin, five-time All-Star in the PHF. And Boston will gather it up and move it out. Under 12 minutes to go in the middle period. Two on one. Shot, save, rebound out there. And another one that Hensley kind of let get away from her. But no damage done for Minnesota. Emily Brown will start it back. Here's Tapani. Shovels it ahead. Shafsal trying to play it. Minnesota intercepts. Morin bangs it off the wall, can't get it out of the zone. Now played ahead beautifully for Tapani. Tapani for Shafsal. Backhand, she scores. Beautiful play that developed quickly for Boston, and they take the one to nothing lead. And this was almost a play where Minnesota was able to extend the zone time. Boston is able to get it out of the zone and spring the offense, catching Minnesota by surprise a little bit here. Here's the sequence from the defensive zone for Boston, the pass to the blue line, and then the pass to the open player in Shafsal. Backhands it into the net, and for the first time tonight, we see a puck end up behind the goal line, and it's behind Nicole Hensley, and Boston taking a one nothing lead. They have a perfect record on the season when they score that first goal of the game, and it comes here in the second period. Third goal of the year for Teresa Schafsall of Austria, seventh round pick out of Vermont. And it was Tapani again getting a point for Boston. 
Not that long after that trade with Minnesota, she again makes a big play, giving Boston the lead against her former team near the midway point of the second period. I said it before, they, they really feel that Tapani in particular has injected life into this offense. This is going to bounce into the near corner back here in the Boston zone. We'll see how Minnesota responds. Well, the fans trying to will them, chanting for Team Minnesota. Di Girolamo on her backhand tried to get it toward the middle, taken back here by Maggie Flaherty. Long shot that was from a shallow angle. Minnesota trying to get a stick on it. Settled down here by Buderak. Played across and the drive from the circle right on and stopped. That was off the stick of Flaherty. And now they find themselves down 1-0, and that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. It doesn't matter how many chances you get. If you don't find a way to capitalize, you might find yourself behind the game soon enough, and that's what's happened here to Minnesota. Brooke Bryant had her shot muffled. There's a drive from Jakes that hit a crowd in front. Played off in behind the net. Dark Angelo got it out of the zone. This is dumped in. Brandt will chase after the former Gopher. Lost her stick. Held in at the point by Megan Keller. She'll feed it across. Return pass to the middle of the zone. Broken up by Minnesota. Now it ends up on the stick of Dark Angelo, and her shot is stopped by Hensley as Boston is enjoying a one to nothing lead. Coach, your team came out with a lot of spark to start this game. We're the better team for that most of that first period. You now find yourselves down by a goal. How do you regain that spark you had to start to find a way back into this game? Yeah, it's just about keep doing the little things well. I mean, we're getting a lot of pucks through the net. We just got to find ways to get on rebounds. And, uh, you know, we get in tight, we got to try to go upstairs. Obviously, their goalie's a good goalie, like every goalie in this league. But, uh, you know, we're right there. We got to have a game. No, no panic in our gear. We're fine. So we just got to keep playing hard. Great. Thank you so much, Coach. Good luck. Yep. Aaron Frankel has stopped all 20 shots she has faced. Played her prep hockey down the road at Shattuck St. Mary's. And then uh, that great college career at Northeastern. Go to Boreen shot and a beautiful diving save by the aforementioned Aaron Frankel. Plenty of time left to get back into this one, but now Boston a bit of confidence with that one goal lead. And uh, they had numbers for a moment, but then Minnesota closed that down quickly. And who else? Lee Steckline. Maybe the best defender in this league, shutting that down. Boreen comes back again, drops it back for Panic. Panic on her backhand, trying to move it toward the front. Feeds it across. Panic making a move to Boreen. Boreen got it across for Panic again, and her shot was tied up. A player goes down. It was Kelly Panic. Fans hissing a little bit. No penalty called. Here's Bookbinder now at neutral ice. Panic comes in to support the puck, plays it across for Channel. Channel to the blue line. Here's Michaela Kava now from the top of the circle. Tried to move it to the middle. Well, this will be a penalty. Yeah, we got a penalty called, another cross checking call. As interference, oh, no, actually, it's interference. the call. And it's going to go against Boston. I mean, Minnesota, with the chances they've generated, Clay, you've got to find a way to score on the power play here. And that's a good call. Dapani taking Zumwinkle down away from the puck. It's been a pretty clean game. We have not seen that many penalties called in this one, but Minnesota will head to the power play for the second time today. Tapani at 11.38. Minnesota 0 for 1 on the power play. Four shots on their first attempt. They get it to the front. And Frankel able to keep it out. Right on the doorstep. That was Panic who took a whack at it. And still unable to solve Aaron Frankel. 30 seconds already gone by on this advantage. Here's Zumwinkle. Grace Zumwinkle drops it back for Abby Boreen. Boreen will play it along the end boards. Sophie Jakes with a big, heavy shot at the point. Steckline, tic-tac-toe, down low. Frankel with the stop. Did the light come on? No. Man, I... I think I Minnesota swear that was. Went in the net. I think Minnesota was ready to celebrate. They thought they had one. I think the crowd did too. But I did too. No light. No light. No signal. No goal. We'll take another look at it here. Minnesota trying to score on the power play. A bouncy puck finds its way into the crease, and then. 
somehow Frankel ends up in the back of the net, and Minnesota fans are getting a second look at this, and they're celebrating. Here's the overhead. This will probably be the best angle you see here. I don't know. That was very close. Minnesota fans a little antsy after seeing the replay, Clay. Apparently no indisputable evidence to overturn it. And now the fans have turned from getting antsy to getting angry, and that's the way it goes. Maybe they can boo them into reviewing it. Do you think uh, that can happen? I think, uh, <laughs> I think they're falling on deaf ears. <laughs> a great crowd here on this Sunday afternoon in St. Paul, too, by the way. Uh, I'm not great at estimating numbers, but I mean, this is going to be better than the Valentine's crowd we had, which was really good on a Wednesday night here in their last home game. I think they had about 6,200 that night. Minnesota brings it in. Emily Brown trying to take over for Boston, turned it over. 49 seconds to go in this Minnesota power play, and they will set up. Bookbinder plays it across for Krasilva. Krasilva, wrist shot, hit a body. Krasilva jumps on it again. Played it down low for Coyne Schofield. It hopped her stick. Kava keeps it alive. Bookbinder plays it to the circle down in front. Broken up. Boston able to dribble it off to the zone and get it down on Hensley with 20 seconds to go in this power play. Looking like a shortstop out there trying to stop that bouncing puck. A bit of a tough shot. It looked like it was an easy save, but those are tough for goaltenders to read. Krasilva brings it back in. Under 10 seconds to go in the advantage. And Pelkey puts it on a tee and drives it out, and that's going to do it for the power play. Minnesota 0 for 2 on the power play. Now 2 for 32 on the year. They did muster three shots, but again, can't get it past Aaron Frankel. Well, they almost did. They came as close as they've come all afternoon long, but still, that puck not crossing over that goal line. Boston hangs on to their one goal lead. Tapani and Fratkin playing a two-person game. They get it to the near corner now. Keller holds it in. Fed across. Broken up. Mueller keeps it alive for Boston. Under six minutes to go in the period. 1-0. Boston trying to add to the lead. Tipped down in deep for Mueller. Sends it over to an open wing. Hillary Knight will get to it. Jakes was shadowing her. Steckline trying to control it for Minnesota. Off to the far corner. Boreen will get there first, and she'll play it around the near wing side. They're sort of bottled up down here. Mueller. Had to take it away. Steckline will put it up on the dasher. Off to the far wing. Abby Cook keeps it in. Now from the circle. Dark Angelo tried to turn it on. There's a drive from Cook. Saved by Hensley. Minnesota gets it to the line and finally out where they can come up for air. 1-0 Boston. Shopsall trying to play it for Boston. Minnesota got it out of the zone. Tapani goes back to the blue line. Takes a whack at it. Now Flaherty has it for Minnesota. Trying to find the equalizer. Buterak on the far wing. Play it toward Cunnan. Was broken up. Now Cunnan in a race for it with DiGirolamo. Intercepted at center by Kava. Kava, good pass ahead. Grisova drive. Saved. The rebound swept away by Frankel. She left a rebound out there again, but only for a microsecond and swept it away very quickly. Another great look by Minnesota. Another big rebound by Frankel. Minnesota, they're going to start scratching their heads here, trying to find ways to beat her tonight. Here's Melissa Channel now coming in for Minnesota. Takes a bump from DiGirolamo. Locked up behind Frankel. You know, we talked to Courtney Kessel, the head coach of Boston, says, you know, Frankel is cat-like. We have seen that from her today. That's a great thing to be if you're a goaltender. Agile, quick, always paying attention to what's going on. Gerard slows up, and that's ramped up off a stick into the netting out of play. Denisa Krizova, eighth round pick out of Northeastern. She was a teammate of Alina Mueller. Mueller in her line out there right now for Boston. Played for Dave Flint after several women's frozen fours in recent years. Lauren Gable took a hard hit, went down momentarily.
Now Coyne Schofield coming back with speed for Minnesota. Through a screen set by Fratkin. And Franco got a piece of it to drive it away. She's been swatting flies here all afternoon. Here's a drive. Jakes through another screen. And again, Franco came out to cut off the angle. Another look here at the sequence. The shot comes through. And fans angry that there was no penalty called. There was a cross check on Panic that sent her to the ice. Truly a big reason why Montreal is sitting atop the BWHL standings right now. But Minnesota, with a regulation win, can get back into a first place tie with Montreal. Under two and a half to go in the period. The only goal in this hockey game coming for Boston here in the second. That's Fleming taking a check. Teresa Schaffsall with her third goal of the year. The only tally today for Boston and in this hockey game. Under two minutes in the period. Here's Cunning now on the near wing. Intercepted at center by Hannah Brandt. Brandt and Cunning, a couple former Gophers there. Battling for it. And that's tipped at center. Bouncing puck into the far corner. Greco tried to... Tee it up for Minnesota and get it out of the zone. DeGeorge is tied up. Boston keeps it alive. Centered. Hit a skate. Minnesota's able to clear. This is going to drift all the way down. And we're going to have an icing call with 1.22 to go. She's Alexis Pearson. I'm Clay Matt because we're under a minute to go in period number two. Kava trying to set Minnesota up in the zone here for one more scoring attack. Oh, that's a, a bad opportunity. Minnesota there as they turn it over to Keller. Apparently Bookbinder couldn't keep it alive. Now Bookbinder gets it back. He'll try again. And that missed the stick of Zumwinkle, and it's going to be another icing call. Ah, 34 tough, seconds. Tough sequence for Minnesota there. Yeah. Can't keep it in at the blue line, and then you ice the puck. Off the draw, controlled by Minnesota. Try to hit Zumwinkle to escape the zone held in by Boston. Grant will angle it toward the middle. Broken up. Zumwinkle circles back. 20 seconds to go in the period. Rink wide pass from the center red line. It's dumped in. Grizova went after it. Boston gets to it first. And they're going to clear it. And we're going to get one more face up before the end of the period. standing by now with Gigi Marvin of PWHL Boston. But of course, it's not only Boston fans tuning in that are going to recognize this name and face. It's Minnesota fans as well. Gigi, welcome back home. Your team is up 1-0 against Team Minnesota heading into the third period. It's been a battle. Minnesota's had a lot of chances, yet you guys have that one goal lead. How has the game been going so far for Team Boston? You nailed it. I mean, how about that six save by Aaron Frankel at two on one? and. Uh, she's kept us in the game. She's outstanding. Minnesota has had a lot of chances, but thankfully we've been able to convert one of them on a beautiful tic-tac-toe play by a T and um, her line mates. And so it's been such a joy being able to come back home and compete in front of this crowd. This crowd is just amazing. And speaking of this crowd, you're getting a chance to play back here in Minnesota, your home state. What has that been like? I know it can be tough sometimes for athletes to put the emotions aside and play the game. What has this day been like for you here back in Minnesota? the best. I mean, I get to play in front of my niece and nephew, and I can't even put the emotions away. I get emotional just thinking about it. They're, she's nine years old, and she gets to witness her auntie play, and it's just the coolest thing. Her auntie and all her um, friends play women's hockey at a professional level, and so it just means the most to me, and I have so many kids who go to my hockey camp that are here as well, and so I, I can't say enough about how special it is to be able to put on the jersey and compete still. Kava's line out there for Minnesota to start. And Tapani's line for Boston as it's dumped in behind Nicole Hensley, who has made 15 saves today, looking for her sixth win of the year. Keller, swing it back, held in by Minnesota's Lee Steckline. She'll shoot it over to the far wing corner. Heavy Karam comes out, and Gerard will skate it back. And it's dumped in. Actually, that's Ratchray who had one of the assists on the goal. Swung around to the far wing side. Nobody there for Boston. Minnesota coming back. Kelly Panic pulls up, waits for help, feeds the middle. 
Here's Coyne Schofield on a backhand, got it right on Frankel. like it they let her know and now we've got a couple players in the box serving penalties here so for some four on four hockey it's been a fast game this will open up the ice up a little bit more here as well and hillary knight known for her speed will get on her horse dump it in and chase and now we're going to have this play whistled down at the blue line that's only going to benefit minnesota they're the team that doesn't have anything to lose right now they're down a goal if you can get boston off their game emotionally that benefits the team who's down in the game so First time tonight we really saw some rough stuff like that. We'll see if it continues here in the third period. Yeah, we'll see who can uh, keep their cool, keep those emotions in check. Long way to go in this hockey game. Here's Steckline with a burst through the middle. Comes to the near wing, trying to cut around Morin. Steckline driven down or lost an edge, one or the other. Comes to Boston. And Mueller will start it back. Lead pass. This is Gable. She'll attack off the side of the cage. Got it back and cycles it back for Morin. Sydney Morin back here in Minnesota. Back for Brandt, another Minnesota native. She'll split the defense. Goes to the middle. Great pass for Fratkin, but it hit a body. Brandt again. Swings it over. Keller, nice move. Brandt has it poked away. And cleared by Panic. That was a beautiful move by the forward to clear the zone for Minnesota. And this is going to roll all the way down. Zapani chases after it. 20 seconds to go in these coincidental matching penalties. Four on four hockey. Keller. Nice pass, but just out of the reach of Zapani, who was trying to chop it on. Now here's Rattray, she'll settle it down. Another shot broken up, that time Greco got it. Cunning trying to motor it out of the zone, can't. Now finally Minnesota slides it back to center. Bratkin picks it up, she'll dump it in. We're back to five on five, both teams skating full strength now. It seems that feistiness after the whistle has gotten some energy into the crowd as well. They've been great all afternoon, but they're oohing and on a little bit more here since that has happened. Definitely the energy is amped up here in downtown St. Paul. Hillary Knight attacking the net. Kept in the zone, fluttering shot goes wide of the cage. Boy, we haven't seen many shots miss the net today. That's another thing. Both of these teams have been very accurate with their shots on goal. There's been a lot of block shots, but not a lot that have missed. You're absolutely right, Clay. If they've gotten through, they've gotten on, and the goalies have had to work hard here today. Left back, a drive. Jessica DiGirolamo is dangerous out in front, and Hensley equal to the task. And again, it's getting physical. Look out. Well, Hensley got poked at after the whistle, and she pounced up ready to have some words. And now we've got rough stuff on the other side of the ice. Ten points on the season so far. We talked about her in the pregame. Here's the sequence that got everybody fired up. And look at Hensley. Hensley did not like it. And then the push after the whistle drew the attention of the official. 
Minnesota, they got a score here, Clay. This is their third power play opportunity. Can they deliver the equalizer? Power play brought to us by Royale Tiger Tau. Power through tough messes. One timer. Glove saved by Frankel. That was kept low to the ice by Zumwinkle. And panic was there. Minnesota wins the faceoff. Zumwinkle over for Jakes. Sophie, another one timer setting up Zumwinkle, and she missed badly that time. Minute 20 to go in this power play for Minnesota. Boston able to muscle it out of the zone. Back through center is Keller. And she'll take it right toward Hensley. Jailbreak opportunity here for Boston. If they score, they will free Mueller from the box. Well, and you mentioned how not many shots have missed tonight. That one by Zumwinkle misses, and that's why it's so important to get shots on net, because that miss allowed oh. Boston to get the puck out of the zone and potentially an opportunity on the other side of the ice. So especially when you've got the extra skater out there on the power play, you've got to get the shots in on that. Now Minnesota is able to finally get back to it with Natalie Bookbinder. She's got some room to operate now. She'll navigate the middle. Feeds the near wing side for Coin Schofield, who threw it out toward Krizova. It's intercepted, driven all the way back down. This will kill some valuable time for Boston. A half minute to go in this power play for Minnesota as they're trying to tie this game up. Down a goal with 14.49 to play. Kava. Shallow angle, the rebound. Frankel is able to get the whistle. Off the draw, Keller fanned on a clearing attempt. Kept in by Minnesota. Sophie Jakes, that long reach held it in. Under 10 seconds to go on this power play. Four player scrum to the left of Frankel. Steckline tried to kick it to a teammate. Boston comes up, and they're back to five on five. Mueller, fresh out of the box, was racing for the puck. Nearly got there, too. A very important penalty kill for Boston. It really feels like if Boston can get that next goal, they mm -hmm. might seal this one up. On the flip side, if Minnesota gets one, it feels like they might be able to run away with it. It's one of those games where we're just waiting for a floodgate to open, and Boston gets a key kill here in the third period. You get the feeling that this Boston team is getting more and more confidence, not only as the season goes on, but just every shift they're getting better. Di Girolamo comes in, tried to feather a pass to the middle. It's intercepted. Fleming got it back to the Boston line. She'll kick it into the zone. Taken back by Healy for Boston. 13 and a half to play. Here in regulation, Di Girolamo got it in. Banged it off the wall. Rattray trying to fight around a defender. Rattray had it again. Minnesota intercepts. Taken back. Here is... Fleming will dump it in. Buderak there first for Minnesota. Plays it across for the former Badger. Cunning. Flipped out in front. Nobody there. Comes to channel. Long drive through a screen. And again, no rebound this time for Frankel. Now this is their fourth chance. We'll see if this can crack the code. One-timer. Save. Rebound on the short side. And Panic couldn't get on it. Emily Brown on a clearing attempt. Put it up out of play. Delay of game. So she's in the box. Former Golden Gopher. And that's going to be cleared by Megan Keller all the way down to buy some time for Boston. Minute 30 to go in this power play. Minnesota desperately trying to tie here in special teams. Zumwinkle steps in over the line. She'll get wide. She'll come in and it rolled off her stick. Backhand to forehand and it might have been poked away. Played across, back for Zumwinkle. She'll feed the point. Thought about the one time, drives in and sends it over the top of the crossbar. Boy, Zumwinkle with a huge shot. Hear it all the way up here in the press box. Top of the circle, far wing side. Played down below the end line. Minnesota looking for the equalizer. Jakes. Feeds it across, one-timer for Sophie. Save and another big rebound cleared by Dark Angelo. Minnesota has set up the play so well on the power play, they just have not been able to find the back of the net. They're cycling well, they're getting good looks, they're getting players in good positions. They just cannot crack the code of Aaron Frankel. Here's Coyne Schofield with some room. Rister went wide of the near post. 
Held in by Bookbinder. Minnesota buzzing on this power play. Can they get it? Fed to the middle. Kava looking for that pass. Never got home. And Boston's able to kick it out of the zone. Ten seconds to go in this advantage for Minnesota. One more rush, perhaps. Well, misplayed at the blue line. And that's going to do it. Just two shots on goal for Minnesota that time. That was, uh, at times, a good-looking power play, but the fewest shots on the advantage so far for Minnesota. Absolutely, and Boston has continued to do what they've done so well all night, which is get in the way of Minnesota shots. Minnesota's put a lot of shots on net. Right now, they're sitting at 33 opportunities that have made their way to the net. That look by Zumwinkle. That's something Zumwinkle does so well, Clay. She is so good at driving to the net. She will find that space one way or another. Yeah. She gets the puck poked off her stick there. She's made that same move a couple times tonight, but she is just so good at making space for herself, and that could be so tough to defend against a player who's able to do that. She's had some looks, but nobody on Team Minnesota has yet to find the back of the net here tonight. We gave our play of the game in the second period to Aaron Frankel <laughs> on a sprawling save. I, I don't know. That was pretty good, too, here in the third period with the stick work to deny Zumwinkle out in front of her cage. Now Flaherty in the Minnesota zone trying to set up offensively. Boston dumps it back in deep. There's Flaherty again. Comes back to the near wing. Fleming puts it on a tee and drives it out. This is going to dribble back in on Aaron Frankel. Here's Hillary Knight, the captain. She'll go rink wide. What a legend Hillary Knight is. Nine gold medals at the World Championships and an Olympic gold in 2018. And she scored the game-winning goal in overtime. The last time these two teams met, less than a minute into overtime. So Minnesota has seen what she can do this season as well. She's got a couple of goals on the year. She's got it now. She'll play it for the blue line. Alina Mueller feeds it back toward Hillary. Here's Hillary Knight again. She'll lay it across, and nobody there for Boston. Minnesota works it out of the zone where Keller will have it. Then back to Mueller. Here's Hillary Knight again. Knight down for Mueller. Mueller is a little bit tied up, a little late getting there. Minnesota clears. Under 10 minutes to play. Tapani takes a whack at it, hit a body. I think that was friendly fire there as Keller got the brunt of that shot. Player goes down. Someone could fell down behind the net. And the reverse pass was intended for her, but it skittered past her. Minnesota, though, able to recover here. Now Kava. As Minnesota's finally able to come out of their zone with Denisa Krizova. Krizova over for Kava. They're offside. Minnesota brings it back deep to George. Chased it. Gerard is able to sweep it back to center ice for Boston. Almost intercepted there by Cunning, And now DeGeorge does come away with it for Minnesota. Kicks it ahead. Got it in deep. And now Boston is able to grab it and send it all the way down. 7.55 to go. Boston trying to get a win in regulation. That would be three points to their credit. That would give them 18 on the year and put them six points out of first place. It's crazy how fast the standings can change. And, and with the three-point system, how much that allows teams to move around in the standings depending on the way the, the game ends up. So Boston picked up their first win in four games or after a four-game losing streak, I should say, the other night. And now they're looking for their second in a row. And if they get it here tonight, and especially if they get it in regulation, that changes their standings so much. Abby Cook sends it across. Dargangelo put it on. And knifing across was Cook. Well, that was actually Tapani. Pardon me. Here is Tapani now. Tapani calling for it. Has her pocket picked. Back comes Minnesota. Panic. Tipped on by Coyne Schofield. And another beautiful save by Frankel. Here's Minnesota again at neutral ice. Flaherty will lay it in behind the net. Fratkin. Takes a check. Loose puck. Minnesota's got it. Out in front to drive. Gloved by Aaron Frankel. As Flaherty got a pretty good look there, too. 
Well, time to start getting tricky, I think. Uh, Clay, the Minnesota team here has put a lot of shots on net. Everything has stayed out. They have tried so many different ways to get pucks in on net. And this look here, a quick glove save made there by Aaron Frankel. Aaron Frankel from Chappaqua, New York. One of the best hockey players in Hockey East history. Her first year in the PWHL has been a glorious one so far. She has been outstanding today. Trying to get her third win. Keller. Knocked away, intercepted a Minnesota chance, two on one. Another save by Frankel and no rebound. And there you can see some of the frustration coming out as Kelly Panic just slammed her stick up against the plexiglass. She regrets not passing that out to Kendall Coyne Schofield, who was sitting in the low slot area. I normally would prefer the shot over the pass, but that is a tough shot to take short side. Kendall Coyne Schofield would have had a great look in tight there. And Kelly Panic frustrated that Minnesota has yet to find the back of the net here today. Channel a long drive, ricochets away as it hits some traffic in front. Minnesota trying to center, taken away here by DiGirolamo. Jessica DiGirolamo digging it free, getting it ahead. Pelkey got it in. Now GG Marvin neutralized out in front, still dangerous as Boston out in front of the cage. Here's Marvin again. Try to play it back to the point. Man, that's going to be whistled down. A hand pass with 5.29 to go. The third period is their lowest scoring period. Only five goals to show for it on the season, but they're going to have to find a way to get at least their sixth one here if they want to stay in this one. They need that tying goal, and time is slowly, or I should say quickly, starting to run out on them. Yeah, and they're crowding 40 shots today, but nothing past Darren Frankel yet. As I say that, backhand feed out in front. Zemlinkel had to chase it to the wall. Now cycled to the near wing side. Steckline pinches down, trying to keep the play alive for the team in purple. Back comes Boston. They've got numbers. It's a two on one. Rattray on the near wing. Drive by Dark Angelo. And the save made by Hensley with 5.01 to go. Well, we talked about Minnesota's opportunities, the shots on net that they've had. Boston has had some good looks as well. A great breakout play here develops into a two-on-one. And the shot comes through. Hensley makes the save and, more importantly, hangs on for the whistle. You know, you and I were talking to Courtney Kessel before the game, Alexis, and she said getting on the road has helped this team. Uh, this is their first road game in over a month. Well, they haven't looked like they've panicked at any point here today. Like we mentioned, Minnesota was the better team to start. Boston didn't look panicked. They stuck to their game, and then they found a way to get the goals first or the, the game's first goal. That's what a good team does. You, you lack the panic, you stay in it, and you find a way to get those goals and those opportunities. That's exactly what Boston has done. Shallow angle, pad save, Aaron Frankel. As Coin Schofield gets another shot on goal. She's been busy today. There's nothing to show for it. Like I said, she's got five points in her last six games. Trying to tie this one up late. Do you think there's something to that, Alexis? Another face off out in front of Frankel. Fleming took the draw for Minnesota. It's Gable who's going to walk it out of the zone for Boston. And it's chopped back into the Minnesota end with four minutes to go in regulation. Minnesota's got to have a sense of urgency now. Down a goal. Mueller picks it off. Kept it alive for Boston in the zone. Circles over to the near wing side. And Minnesota's able to push it out. Mueller got it over for Knight. Now her pass. Off for Schaffsall. Schaffsall made a move toward the net, but take it out of the play. Good job by Britton Fleming. Here's Rattray. Her pass intercepted. Chance. Coyne Schofield is stoned by Frankel. Mm. Almost a costly turnover for Boston, but Minnesota can't make them pay. Kendall Coyne Schofield has been so good today. She's playing with some feistiness to her game. She's had some opportunities, and that one probably her best look of the whole night. A chance to tie it for Minnesota, and she just can't 
find a way to get it into the back of the net. Let's take another look at it. We've talked tonight about the turnovers Minnesota has forced. They force another one here, the F1 getting in there, forcing the turnover that Sophia Cunnan, and then the shot taken by Kendall Coyne Schofield. Took it at the right time. Frankel comes out to challenge. Not much more you can do there. And Minnesota has got to be scratching their heads, thinking, what else do we got to do? Fans in New England uh, watching this game, a collective <laughs> deep breath when they saw that turnover, especially to Coyne Schofield, who's playing with a lot of emotion, especially since things got frisky in front of the net here earlier in the game. 2.40 to go. One nothing, Boston trying to hold on and escape the XL Energy Center with a big three-point victory over the second place team in the league. Tied up along the near wall. Brown is going to come away with it. She'll feed it across to her defensive mate, Keller. Keller gets it over to Gable. Gable trying to work it out of the zone. Minnesota holding it in. Mueller had it played off her stick. Now she is able to gather it up and shovel it out. And it'll bounce through the neutral zone. Back to the Minnesota end of things. Rink wide pass. Driven in by DeGeorge. Minnesota's got fresh skates out there. Under two minutes to go. Now we're at the point in the game we got to keep an eye on Hensley. See how Minnesota handles these last couple minutes of the game when they decide to take her to the bench and get the extra skater on the ice. Hillary Knight's got it. She skates it to the red line. She'll push it in to the Minnesota end. Sophie Jakes now. With some speed, with some room, rolls off her stick. She'll chase it down in the corner. Plays it back for Fleming. Hensley's there goes off. Hensley. Yes. Attacker on. Six skaters now for Minnesota. They feed the point. Stick save, Frankel. A minute 20 to go. Here's Zumwinkle. Backhand centering pass broken up. Minnesota holds the zone. Coin. Looking to feed the middle. She stays with it. Plays it back, intercepted by Tapati, and she'll rifle it out of the wow. zone. Under a minute to go. Big face off, Panic wins it. Minnesota sets up, empty net. A lot of room for Jakes, big rebound left out there by Frankel, but nobody there in front for Minnesota. 40 seconds to go, Jakes feeds it across. Sophie gets it back. Down for Zumwinkle. For Sophie Jakes, intercepted, bouncing puck. It's going to drift wide of the net. No icing. And Minnesota's got to hurry. 20 seconds to go. Fans on the edge of their seats. And now Minnesota's got to regroup. This is Zumwinkle. 10 seconds to go. Bad pass, intercepted, and Boston scores. G.G. Marvin will salt this one away. I mean, if somebody was going to do it, why not the Minnesota native putting the cherry on top of today's matchup? Most people in attendance are going to be disappointed by that goal, but there's a few G.G. Marvin fans here today who are excited to see her get a goal in her home state. And Minnesota turns it over the pass off the back of the skates and Marvin pounces on it and tosses it into the empty net. The first empty net goal scored of the season by this Boston team. And Gigi Marvin, the one to do it. What a weekend for Gigi Marvin and War Road Hockey. The girls win the state championship yesterday here at the X. Gigi Marvin, who turns 37 in a few days, the oldest player in this league, salts the game away. It's a 2-0 win for Boston over Minnesota.